There are so many classic films that any channel can recommend on any given day. But what about the potential classics that may well have passed you by? What about the films that you may have neglected to love the first time around? Today on Independent Pictures we're going to dive deep to uncover the gems that we feel didn't get the respect they deserved. When filmmaker and critical punchbag Paul W.S. Anderson released Event Horizon in the summer of 1997, it was because future box office smash Titanic's release was delayed until Christmas, so an August box office spot was left wide open. Yet the film's performance at the box office was underwhelming, and alas, Paul W.S. Anderson was met with an already all too familiar response from the critics. Yet unlike other Anderson films, Event Horizon has aged rather well, at least in the eyes of the fans. In fact, this unashamedly obscene sci-fi romp is now remembered fondly for its many merits. It may even be referred to as, whisper it, Paul W.S. Anderson's magnum opus. Yes, it all harkens back to what Kurt Russell reportedly said to Anderson on the set of his follow-up project Soldier. Forget about what this movie's doing now. In 15 years' time... This is going to be the movie you're glad you made. And perhaps Kurt Russell was right. Kurt Russell's usually right. Time has proven this supernatural sci-fi thriller to be a cult classic, an intriguing genre-bending outing that fans fixate over to this very day. Let's take a look at why. Imagine the haunted house in space concept of Ridley Scott's Alien. But taken one giant leap further. One admittedly insane giant leap. Yes, imagine Ridley Scott's Alien, but this time the ship is basically the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. Yes, the plot of Event Horizon centres on a rescue ship comprising of a scientist, a captain, and a band of assorted space truckers who have come across the mysterious Event Horizon, which has recently returned from a black hole, with an unnamed and unholy being or even curse on board. Yes, predictably things go sour quickly. The whole film is unashamedly gothic and intense. As such, it seems to fuse the atmospheric sci-fi dimensions of the thing with the gory excess of a slasher film. The nature of the unseen and indeterminate villain is rather akin to John Carpenter's celebrated remake. The tendency to pick off its victims one by one is very akin to the perverse thrills of the slasher genre. In these terms, it must be said that the film makes use of classic horror formulas. It must also be mentioned that even the film's critics and the media took the time to praise the Event Horizon's cast and production design. The gothic look of the Event Horizon itself is based on, we're not kidding, Notre Dame Cathedral, and lends an uncomfortable elegance to proceedings. Then there's the cast, boasting charismatic portrayals from the likes of Sam Neill, Lawrence Fishburne and Jolie Richardson. Sam Neill even gamely explains quantum theory using the visual analogy of a pen and paper. An explanation which was brutally mocked by critics, only for the same critical establishment to largely praise Christopher Nolan for using the exact same analogy in Interstellar. By the end of Event Horizon, the audience is left as though emerging from a roller coaster, with the film's many excesses playing hand in hand into its more elegant set design and surprisingly clever pacing and atmosphere. And hey, with scenes like this, what more could you possibly ask for? I see. Box office. The film grossed an utterly damning 60 million on its infernal 42 million budget. However, it later found some redemption on home media release, going on to become a cult classic, especially with casual sci-fi fans. It's derivative. At the time, the film's heavy-handed use of illusion and reference was heavily criticised, with most discussion falling somewhere between whether it was a piece of blandly derivative cinema, desperately aiming for cult status, or simply a case of mind-numbingly unimaginative popcorn cinema. Atmosphere. 
While the film sets off reasonably enough, it was perceived that the psychological terror it worked so hard to create was replaced all too quickly with video nasty gore, buckets of blood, and horror created by makeup artists, not writers. Pacing. The frenetic pace of large parts of the film was considered to be at odds with the psychological atmosphere it was attempting to foster, leading to a bizarre combination of confusion and predictability. So how do you scare an audience who knows what's coming? Well, you use an incredibly loud and jarring 90s techno rock soundtrack, of course. The characters. Lastly, although audiences generally thought the concept offered plenty of horror for thought, critics focused on what they saw as a barrage of -of run-of-the-mill shock effects and sonic jolts, without ever really probing into its characters' inner lives. It's probably best summed up by the maestro, Roger Ebert. They're a highly trained space crew, on a mission where space and time are bread and butter. Yet they apparently know less about quantum theory than the readers of this review. So what do we think? Whether it's distant galaxies, Mars rovers are indeed faster than light travel, space intrigues, and so space and aliens mean a big audience in the theatres. Event Horizon turns out to have nothing whatsoever to do with quantum physics, and far from being simply derivative, it's in fact a high-concept haunted house in space drama, demonically obsessed with ghoulish empty eye sockets and bubbling rivers of blood. There's nothing intrinsically wrong with a movie being deferential, as cult films almost invariably contain elements from several other movies. To its credit, this film successfully recaptures some of the raw and claustrophobic feel of Ridley Scott's Alien, the unsettling psychology of Kubrick's The Shining, the murderous presence in Wes Craven's Elm Street, and the body horror of Carpenter's The Thing, all bonded together in unholy matrimony. In particular, Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill, with one notable scream excluded, mind you. Are excellent. Each does a convincing job with the script, and they do really invest a bizarre charm into their performances, in what's basically a satanic slasher film set on board the Starship Enterprise. With curious smirk, Dr. Weir warns the crew members that they've entered hell, and that's how audiences should approach it, on its own terms. Ultimately, though, the meat bags here are simply no match for the imposing claustrophobic look of Event Horizon, and its pretty spectacular vision of a machine-turned-monster in deep space. We consider Event Horizon to be Anderson's best work, and while it's perhaps not a great film, Event Horizon does produce an intense sense of visual involvement. In an unholy union, the hallucinatory, energetic, and delightfully hellish cinematic language matches its subject matter perfectly. Boldly going where the haunting, alien, and many others have never gone before, this sci-fi chiller is basically an R-rated Star Trek, with brief nudity and a moderate dose of slasher film violence. And for that, we at IP salute it. What happened to your eyes? Where am I going? We won't need eyes to see. What are you talking about? Independent Pictures!